just before we get on track, I'd, I'd like to set some further context. That this is the world's fastest car from zero to 400 kilometers an hour and zero again in a little over 31 seconds. If you watched the previous video, welcome back to the bunker. We are standing in front of the UK's first Koenigsegg Regera. Massive deal. I'm absolutely blown away by this brand. For me, in the last few years, they've really ramped it up, particularly with the introduction of the Regera, the announcement of the Yesco, and the future of this brand. You shall see uh, unfold a lot more at Geneva this year is absolutely incredible. But we're here to talk about this thing and set some real context. So Koenigsegg for me is one of the few brands which is truly offering something completely unique in the supercar and hypercar experience. But there's one incredibly unique feature of this car which we're gonna share with you shortly on the first drive on our very own circuit. Okay, so I'm not normally stuck for how to set context of how ridiculous the figures are that surround the car. Before we get into the details, and they really are incredible, I wanna sort of set an overview of the foundation, that starting with the weight, full tank, wet weight with all fluids in, around about 1,590 kilograms, which is around about the average weight of, take your sort of BMW 3 Series. Now, you've got three electric motors. One of them is direct drive on the drive shaft, and then you've got two on either rear wheels. The combined electric power is around about 700 horsepower. So you've got the power of a Tesla purely from electric alone at the weight of around about a BMW 3 Series. And then on top of that, you have a five liter twin turbocharged V8, <laughs> all driven through, and this is the most unique character trait of the car, all driven through a single drive, which is just one gear. In fact, calling it a gear is actually a disservice because this doesn't have a gearbox at all. It is a single direct drive unit. So what a single gear is like is the equivalent of only having seventh gear, right? So the Koenigsegg Agera recently set a road speed record of around about 270 miles an hour, finished that top speed in seventh gear. This car only has the equivalent of that seventh ratio. So think about this. When was the last time that you accidentally started your car in second gear? Say, you know, you might have just mis misplaced it. Instead of starting it in first, you started it in second. And it goes off, but it feels a little bit bogged down, a, a little bit heavy. Imagine th this car, without the electric power, can do naught to 60 in seventh gear in four seconds, right? So that in itself is an incredible achievement. Combined with the electric, it drops that naught to 60 down to 2.8 seconds, and that's only restricted by the amount of uh, traction available on any given day, so surface, temperature, driving conditions, etc. And then it'll go on to an electronically restricted 255 miles per hour with one gear alone. It's the weirdest thing. I actually have had the opportunity to drive a Regera. It was actually up the uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed hill climb. Um, and while it was really short, it was one of the most unique driving experiences I've ever had, uh, albeit in around about 60 seconds. So today we're gonna immerse you in what it's really like to drive. But before then, I'm gonna give you a walk and talk around all of the little details that make this particular car incredibly special. So, UK's first registered Regera. This is Chassis 150, uh, and it's specced with the optional Aero Pack. So if we come down here, uh, as part of the Aero Pack, it's designed to offer more downforce. So you get a extended front splitter. You get these canards here. As we go around the side, you can see how the air flows down here with these carbon winglets, and then you get these these sort of external aero wings here. This package increases the downforce from 310 kilograms on the standard car to 385 kilograms. Okay, speaking of unique features, I think the rear of the car is an incredible thing. So at first you'd be forgiven for thinking, 
that this was the exhaust. In a way, this is an exhaust, but it's not your conventional exhaust. This is to withdraw the hot air that comes off the hybrid unit. It is, in fact, these things here. So they teamed up with a company called Akrapovich. They are the masters of making exhausts, and they managed to integrate these fishtail exhausts into the design of the diffuser. It's incredible. What's actually quite cool about having this car and this design of exhaust tip here is that this was inspired by exhaust tips from cars from the like 1920s and 1930s. We are on uh, Vista Heritage and just outside that window there is cars from the 1920s and 30s with exhausts just like that. Never <laughs> did I think I would ever see an exhaust design on a modern day hypercar that represents something from the 1920s. Incredible. And then, speaking of the hybrid, this has a three-phase unit where you can plug it in and charge it. The Regera is the first production car to use an 800 volt electrical system. The benefit of that is they're able to use smaller components, so lighter wires, smaller electric motors, keeping the weight down, but still have the same or more power as you would get out of a 400 volt unit. The cool thing is where you plug it in, is behind the number plate housing here. How trick is that? While we're here, we should speak about this rear wing. Um, not only is it active, so under braking, it will go up and help to increase drag, to help you slow down, but also this whole wing also retracts. In its current state, it looks like it's fixed on these points, but if you look here, we've got these slots. The whole wing will recess back into the body and this part of the wing will sit flush within this unit here. Okay, one of the more remarkable things about this car, even before you've seen it, is the key. So, I mean, this, the amount of functionality that is in this key alone is incredible. Um, it allows the car to transform. So you can uh, individually select the body panels you wish to operate and, and control from this key. So if I were to double tap this symbol here, off the key, open the massive carbon rear clamshell, this whole thing is a single piece of carbon. Imagine that. And so as a result, the details inside are ridiculous. Look at that. If, if this was fortunate enough to be in my garage, I, I think I would just display it like that. What a work of art. You've got the, the iconic triple X suspension here. One of the massive reasons that this car is able to get so much grip through these tires is the triple X suspension under acceleration, rather than keeping the car completely flat, it allows it to like squat. So through that squat, it, it applies weight and it applies traction through these tires with that amount of torque, 1500 pounds feet of torque. If you're working in newton meters, that's almost 2,000 newton meters of torque. The numbers are just ridiculous. And so all of these components allow that kind of power to be applied to the floor, which we shall experience momentarily. Look, we could make an entire documentary just around the small details on this car. This isn't something that I would normally show <laughs> as, as part of the exposure of a car, but this is the housing for the central locking wheel nuts for the car. So say you did want to change your tires or change your wheels, this is where it's housed. I mean, just look how beautiful that is. It's got this sort of little dish there to house this. Now, this is billet and it's just Beautiful, I mean, just look how well that slots. I cannot tell you how satisfying that is. The tolerances are absolutely beautiful. Just feels great. But when was the last time you saw a component so beautifully engineered just to take the wheels off your car? And so this here is the area where your roof sits. So it conveniently slots in. There are cars in this bracket where if you take the roof off, you've got nowhere to actually fit it. So that's pretty trick and look at the amount of exposure you've got of the carbon body of course the whole thing is built around a carbon tub so one of the renowned features of a Koenigsegg is how beautiful they are on the inside I mean they look exceptional from the outside but they take incredible pride in when this thing 
is, for want of a better word, exploded, and all of the panels are up, and the whole workings of the car are exposed, this brand really stands by its quality because they put everything on show. Every single panel on this is carbon fiber, and where you see where two carbon panels join, and even if it's on the inside where you would rarely see it, the carbon weave always matches. All right. Let's take a look inside this incredible interior. Notice the width of the sill on this is absolutely huge. Sat in a full carbon tub um, and the sense of occasion when you approach it, if not just for the door itself, but before you've closed it, just check out the hinge on this. It is unbelievable the amount of engineering which has gone into this door. For example, the way that it opens, it actually keeps the profile of the door much closer to the bodywork of the car, allowing you to park it in much tighter spaces, even than a conventional car. And then once I'm inside, there is also one button here to fluidly retract. So inside as well, I mean, as you would expect from the detail on the outside, the detail on the inside as well is just completely next level. But what's really nice about it is it's not fussy. It's actually really super simple. Also, this is pretty cool. The dedicated magnetic slot for your key. Now I know the topic of cup holders might not be the most exciting of things, uh, but when was the last time you saw a supercar, let alone a hypercar with two cup holders? The TDF outside, based on an F12, so a Grand Tour platform, only has one cup holder, yet it has two seats, so quite rightly it should have cup holders for two people. This, distinctly in a category of its own, conveniently has two cup holders. I know it's funny, but it's pretty cool. Along with the practicality of the cup holders, there's also a disproportionately handy nose lift. In fact, that's a disservice. It actually lifts both the front and the rear axles, so it sort of has four axle lift, but the front lifts to such a degree you can get yourself over any speed bumps that might come your way. Okay, here we are, inside the Regera. So we're about to take it on our track for the very first time. I, I still can't believe those words come out of my mouth. However, before then, we're gonna have to fill this up with fuel because in uh, typical filming fashion, we're basically empty. Uh, but it's, it's an opportune moment to share with you another interesting character feature, which is how you go about fueling up a Koenigsegg Regera. This is the way you fill up a Koenigsegg Regera. It's crazy, huh? The fuel filler cap isn't on the outside of the car. It's on the inside here. Okay. I mean, it's great though, isn't it? Because I mean, Koenigsegg have made you know, arguably the interior of this car more beautiful than the exterior. And when you can open the, the whole rear clamshell like this, everyone in the area can come and check out Koenigsegg's remarkable work. It's taken all my lunch money, this. So everything on the key can, controls every body paddle on the car separately. <laughs> All right, what is quite cool, despite the fact that we've just filled this thing up with dinosaur juice, uh, we're now about to roll out of here in what uh, Koenigsegg calls sneak EV mode. Um, now, if I pull that up paddle, which initiates drive, then I gotta creep away as silent as we can. I love the juxtaposition of that, huh? How cool is that? And today, we are, for the very first time, taking it out on our circuit. And here we are. Whoop. Oh, good God, it's... So, I've t <laughs> straight away then, I'll be completely honest with you, I just went and pressed the downshift paddle. It's the weirdest thing because while it does have up and downshift paddles, they're not actually used for anything other than putting it into drive and reverse. However, it does do one other, oh good God, very other special trick. <laughs> when you want it to. Crikey. So when I took the TDF out on track for the first time, 
after a fair few laps, I managed to get it up to 140 miles an hour down that straight. On that first squirt alone down there, this just touched 140 miles an hour. <laughs> if I hadn't have taken the TDF on here in the dry just a few days ago, had some time to build up lap after lap to become familiar with it, I'm not sure that that figure would have impressed me as much as it just has. Are we ready? Let's try that again. It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous pace. The strangest thing is, God, the amount of torque it's got. It's hard to put it into words. It's like, it's almost this tangible ball of thick energy under your right foot. It's this massive, this swell. It's a huge sort of tidal wave of punch in the kidneys. <laughs> what a machine. I'm still getting used to the fact that I don't have to use these, these up or down shift paddles in which to get any more power out of it. Now, I do want to talk about a feature where you can actually use the up and down shift paddle. So if I was to hold in this down shift paddle right now, it decouples the direct drive. So in its standard form, it's in what's known as KDD. That stands for Koenigsegg Direct Drive. And in its standard format, don't get me wrong, it has a huge amount of uh, available power, 1,500 horsepower and 1,500 pounds feet of torque. Remember that, pounds feet, not Newton meters. It's actually closer to 2,000 Newton meters of torque available instantly under your right foot. However, if you want to use a little bit more of that, I try and find this, this straight here. I can pull in the, what would be the conventional downshift paddle. So what pulling on that downshift does is it opens up, it takes it out of Koenigsegg direct drive, opens up what Koenigsegg called the hydrocoupe, which is effectively the world's most hardcore <sighs> torque converter unit and it allows the engine revs to rise, therefore giving you more available and therefore instant power under your right foot. Not that that's anything you'd think you would need out of a car like this. <laughs> Which gives you a load of that. Unbelievable. On the other hand though, it's absolutely incredible how usable they've made 1500 horsepower feel. I mean, we can slow this right down now recouple the hydro coupe. It literally feels like I'm talking about something on Star Wars here, but that's a real word. And you can go and drive it as normal, like this. And that's what's amazing about this thing. It really is a sort of Jekyll and Hyde car, because if you compare the interior, for example, of this car, the Regera with the Agera, certainly the Agera R, this is worlds apart in terms of refinement and luxury. I mean, they, they even have in here wireless Apple CarPlay. So that gives you an idea of the ethos of this car, that it very much is a Grand Tourer with, don't forget, your two cup holders. But then you can get it down onto the straight like this, decouple the Hydra Coupe. <laughs> yes, and you can bend physics. Speaking of physics, it's a little bit like Christian von Koenigsegger's just ripped up the whole rule book. Out with the gears, out with the atoms and molecules. We're doing this my way. Koenigsegg are actually only making 80 of these cars. Conveniently, I'm sure you can appreciate they're all sold out. This is the last car to roll off the production line in 2019. So this is chassis 150. What's special about that is 2019 was Koenigsegg's 25th anniversary year. So not only is this a special car because it's a special car, <laughs> it's, it's a special car because of the significance of the time that it was built and the time that it rolled off the production line. That's unhuman. That is absolutely unacceptable performance. What? Christian, what are you thinking, man? It's, <laughs> I can't get my head around it. I can't get, and this is in the wet, don't forget. So that, that sort of moves me conveniently onto the triple X suspension, which is part of the magic which allows this thing to gain so much traction despite the fact that it's got so much torque and wet, cold tires. So what triple X allows it to do is squat under acceleration. 
the weight transfer heads towards the rear of the car, allowing it to squat, apply weight on those rear tyres and give it some of that. I sort of, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of bracing for someone to like punch me in the face. It's so, it's absolutely ludicrous. I'm going to be more progressive with my throttle now because we're going to end up giving the planes on the airfield a run for the money if I don't. And what's really nice is Koenigsegg have managed to maintain a hydraulic steering rack. Now what that translates to is wonderful steering feel, which in this day and age, once again, is something that is sort of dying out really due to various regulations. Lots of manufacturers have turned to electronics steering racks, which a lot of the time detract from that feel. The weight of this is actually, one second while I brace for this. It's just absurd. Absolutely license losing fast. What? What a treat. You might get in this if you've been driving sort of modern day cars for a while and feel that at first it's, it might actually feel quite heavy but after a while it just reminds you of what proper steering feel used to feel like. Now I just want to draw your attention now to the way this thing sounds not because it sounds like a nuclear submarine with tyres it's just the way that these revs build have no correlation between how fast you're actually moving. Honestly the best way or easiest way of explaining what this thing's like to drive is a V8 powered electric car. It's just massive linear pull. It feels more like at the end of this circuit, there's a, a sort of industrial grade electromagnet drawing me down the tarmac. It's not acceleration, it's pull. It sort of creates its own black hole, gets all of the drag out of the way and just sucks you through the planet. It's just daft, absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> When I spoke to Christian von Koenigsegg when I had the first drive of this car up the Goodwood Festival of Speed hill climb, he said the inspiration for how this car drives came from his time spent in driving electric cars. He loved the instant throttle response, but it was missing that Koenigsegg feel. And well, let's face it, the big component of that is that ridiculously powerful five liter twin turbocharged V8. So he was like, how do we have that immediate throttle response of an electric car but still sprinkle the fairy dust of Koenigsegg's magic all over it. Cut to a few years later where himself and the mad scientist has ripped open the block and added in a single drive hydro coupe and here we are. And that's why I say it sounds like a V8 powered Tesla. That's no coincidence. That's because from the outset, the inspiration from Christian himself was exactly that. Whoever did the ECU and the traction control calibration on this also deserves a medal. What, what this is keeping in check <laughs> is ridiculous. So how does it compare to anything else that I've driven? Well, first of all, in a strange way, there's very little to compare it with because there is no other car on the planet that has a drivetrain like this. There is nothing of this power with a single direct drive. So in a way it sits in a world of its own, but equally, you know, on paper, it's sort of up there with the likes of a Bugatti Chiron, which as chance would have it, I've been very fortunate to spend some time in that car. And while it's very impressive, it's the instant throttle response that this provides, which is truly in a world of its own. It is an otherworldly experience. I wish more people could experience what I'm trying to convey right now. And I keep coming back to this electric powered V8 because that's exactly what it is. Rolls-Royce have actually coined the term effortless everywhere, which in the world of hyper luxury cars that are almost better for being driven in rather than driving yourself, that's a wonderful application. And I never thought that I would ever be able to relate to or apply a similar terms to a hypercar. It's not, it's just not something that you would associate with at all. But what I love about this circuit is it's not smooth. It's not a perfect, billiard table of tarmac like say for example Silverstone it's barely undulating there's cracks there's bumps it feels like driving on a road and yet through every corner and over every crack and under every breaking point it's effortless everywhere 
And to say that for a hypercar, or in fact, here's another interesting piece of trivia. Koenigsegg referred to this as a mega car, a mega GT. The reason being, when a car pushes over 1300 horsepower, it's the equivalent to one megawatt of power. Therefore, this is really in its own bracket of being a mega car. And it really is. It's this sort of mega luxury GT that can destroy Chiron's when it wants to, but also tone itself back down and be up there in the effortless everywhere world of Rolls-Royce. I've never felt anything like it. So, I mean, as far as the, uh, the debut of the track goes, I feel like we're punching exceptionally high, maybe a little bit too high. I mean, where do you, where do you go from here? Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave your comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Ain't trying to link no channel with you.